Machado. I'm here at Orange County Flight Center at John Wayne Airport in Southern California, and we're about ready to enter the flight simulation laboratory. And we're going to do an experiment. And even if you don't fly experimental aircraft or an experimental simulator, if there is such a thing, I think you'll find this quite interesting. Follow me. Okay, we're going to begin our experiment by taking off from John Wayne Airport in Southern California in this Cessna 172 at sea level under standard conditions. Now this means we'll have a very low density altitude. We'll climb out at 74 knots indicated. What we're looking for here is the climb attitude required to maintain 74 knots. It appears that to climb at this speed under low density altitude conditions, we need to maintain an attitude of approximately 12 degrees nose up. Now, let's do the same experiment from an airport with a density altitude closer to 8,000 feet. Since this is a non-turbocharged airplane, it is clear that we're taking a lot longer to accelerate to lift off speed, and I do mean a lot longer. Once we lift off, however, we're going to lower the nose and accelerate to 74 knots in ground effect. Then we'll determine the attitude necessary to maintain 74 knots in the climb. Okay, we're approaching 74 knots, so let's establish the attitude we need to maintain that climb speed, which looks to be about 7 degrees nose up. The takeaway point here is that under high density altitude conditions, you'll need to climb at a slightly lower attitude to maintain the same climb airspeed you used at a lower density altitude airport. Now the simplest explanation for the difference between these two climb attitudes is that at a lower density altitude, your airplane produces a great deal more thrust which allows you to climb at a much steeper angle. At higher density altitudes, your engine produces much less thrust, which restricts you to a much shallower climb path. So folks, there you have it. When taking off at an airport at a high density altitude, if you want to climb out at the same speed you used at an airport at a low density altitude or under low density altitude conditions, you're going to have to use a much lower climb attitude. And one of the big problems that pilots make is, under high density altitude conditions, they tend to rotate to the same climb attitude they used at a low density altitude airport or an airport under low density altitude conditions. And you can imagine what that would do to your climb rate in that instance. Greetings folks, my name is Rod Machado and I'd like to tell you a little about my aviation educational tools. Now, if you're like me, and I know I am, then you want learning to be a fun and enjoyable process. And that's why my philosophy of training can be summed up in three words, laugh and learn. I guarantee that you'll learn a lot from my aviation learning tools, and you'll also enjoy the process. You'll enjoy these products because they not only cover topics that aren't typically found in other books and videos, and I'm speaking of the connective tissue that helps us learn better. You'll also like them because they're engaging and real fun to use. If you're interested in learning to fly, for instance, then you might consider purchasing my private pilot handbook, workbook and how to fly an airplane handbook. These books are also valuable for helping you do well on your biennial flight review, assuming you already have a private pilot certificate. Now both handbooks are also available as audiobooks, and this allows you to learn while you drive, and hopefully you won't try lifting your car off the freeway as you're learning. And if you actually do manage to do this, please drop me a note with pictures. Of course, all my books are available as ebooks in PDF form or at the Apple Store as iPad apps. Now, for those of you working on your instrument rating, which isn't a special license required to puff on a piccolo, then please consider purchasing my Instrument Pilot's Handbook as well as my IFR Survival Manual. The Instrument Pilot's Handbook provides you with all the information you need to comprehend instrument flying, pass the IFR knowledge exam, and pass the knowledge portion of your Instrument Proficiency Check 2. Now, the IFR Survival Manual is an advanced 
text that can be purchased along with the instrument handbook. And you'll find many advanced concepts discussed in the survival manual that provide real-world IFR knowledge. If you're planning on becoming a sport pilot, which doesn't mean you wear a Raiders cap or a Lakers jersey with your scarf and goggles, then please consider purchasing my sport pilot handbook. This book provides you with all the basic knowledge you'll need to pass the sport pilot knowledge exam. After reading it, you'll not only wow your instructor with your vast aviation knowledge, you'll also allow him or her to experience what I call the OMG, how did you learn all that phenomenon? Also, if you're interested in the psychology of flying and flight training, then you'll definitely want to pick up a copy of Plane Talk, The Mental Art of Flying an Airplane. This book is filled with wonderful articles that make connections between what you already know and what you need to know to fly safely. And this book also covers many aspects of decision-making, risk assessment, and tips and techniques for preventing some of the silly mistakes that pilots make. And don't forget about my e-learning courses, too. You can learn about airspace, aerodynamics, cross-country flight planning, using Nexrad to make better weather decisions, and much more. And you can do it on your computer, your iPad, your Android device, or your tablet device, whatever it may be. Please read about these and my other products on my website at becomeapilot.com. So fly safe, and may you always land as soft as a butterfly with sore feet.